I have no sympathy for criminals, but for family, I do. Garp the hero, the strongest man in One Piece, did out of devil fruit and hockey alone. He rivaled the likes of the pirate king, Gold D. Roger. He garnered respect from both his adversaries and allies alike, giving him a reputation with transcended time to even authorities of the higher ops. <laughs> like this man is able to take shots at the celestial dragons in their very Holmes. He truly is the freest marine in the world government. And now, Garp is off to challenge one of the greatest threats of the new age, Blackbeard. Why? Well, of course, all for his real son. Stop the cap. <laughs> Seriously, how is this man allowed to do the things he does? And what makes Garp so dangerous? During Marineford and Ace's death, we see Garp charge towards a Kainu filled with emotions to the brim, only to be halted by the Den Fleet Admiral Sen Goku. Garp had to tell his friend to hold him still, otherwise he would kill a Kainu. This caused a massive commotion amongst the One Piece community. Whether Garp would actually deal a lethal blow to the magma man himself and would he really turn his back on the marines well to understand the true strength of monkey d garp and where his allegiance lies we have to start from the very beginning 78 years ago garp was born in goa kingdom within the east blue not much is known about his upbringing but we can postulate that garp wanted to change the world government from within as their inner politics and corruption was present even before his time. It's actually highly indicated that the Goa Kingdom is where one of the 20 allied nations originate from, much like Dressrosa and Alabasta. This notion is based on the similarities pointed out by Luffy and Sobo, along with the fact that Saint Jalmak, a celestial dragon, went out of his way to pay tribute in visiting the island. Consequently, Goa Kingdom being treated in this way led to one of the biggest theories in the community. Garp falling in love with a celestial dragon, maybe even Jalmak's relative, and later this woman would give birth to Monkey D Dragon. Yes, this would mean that Dragon is actually a celestial dragon. But moving away from this possibility, what's certain is that Garp joined the Marines at a ripe age of 22. Sengoku and Suru had also enlisted during the same period. These three would build a bond which would last even till our current time. Now within the same year, Garp must have been married or at least had a lover as only a year after joining the marines, Monkey D Dragon would be born. Within the next 10 to 20 years of his tenure as a young marine, Garp would go on to face rookies that would later become legends in their own rights. This was when the Rumba Pirates had made a name for themselves until they fell to the Florian Triangle. At the same time, this would be the age for Roger to start his journey in the sea. Like with Smoker and Luffy, there seemed to have been a strong parallel between Garp and Roger, where the two of them would sail the world butting heads wherever they could. At 40 years of age, Garp would fight a threat like no other. The then strongest pirate, Rox D. Zebek, had caused chaos all over the world. In fact, this period in time was considered as the era of rocks. Even big names such as Whitebeard, Golden Lion Shiki, Kaido, Big Mom, Captain John and many others were part of his crew. Moreover, the marines feared rocks so much that they teamed up with the up and coming pirate Goldie Roger to take him down. This was when the infamous God Valley incident took place, 38 years before the current timeline. Zubek had attacked God Valley, an island inhabited by celestial dragons and their slaves. Being a marine, Garp was forced to defend this island and had met his longtime nemesis, Roger, trying to stop Zubek from executing his goals. This has some comparison to Luffy taking down Crocodile with the help of Tashigi and Smoker. Likewise, Garp and Roger established a temporary partnership where later all evidence of this event and mysterious island was erased by Imusama. The world government could never make this incident 
incident public as they teamed up with a pirate. As a result, Garp was given all the glory for himself and was thus hailed as the hero of the Marines. However, he rarely discussed the God Valley incident, feeling a sense of shame about this event. Similarly, when Luffy defeated Crocodile and saved Alabasta, the Marines took all the credit for the incident, making Smoker the main protagonist and hero. Though Smoker was not too happy about it, his respect for Luffy grew much much more. Again, similar to Garp's relationship with Roger. Regardless, this all clearly shows the strength that Garp possessed as he was able to go toe to toe against some of the biggest names in the world. He had even cornered Roger on multiple occasions. We have to remember that Roger was at his peak. This speaks a huge testament for Garp. Roger was able to face off against Whitebeard. And let's not forget, Roger had terminal illness at this time. So just imagine a prime Roger and his adversary Garp, where both these monsters had no devil fruits and just relied on their hockey alone. This is an extremely impressive feat. As in Kaido's fight against Luffy, he spoke about Roger as he admired him, stating how Roger was able to conquer the world with this power. As even a strong devil fruit, it won't matter as hockey transcends everything. <laughs> Yet, even with that, Rox was the strongest enemy Roger had to face during his pirating days, and even the pirate king had to get help from Garp to make this an even fight. So this goes to show how Roger saw Garp on a similar level and wavelength as himself. This would also effectively mean Garp too possessed a tear free conqueror's hockey to even compete with the likes of them. Imbuing cannonballs with conqueror's hockey and throwing them would cause serious damage. A character like Blackbeard who is Garp's current target will find it extremely difficult to fight against such a monster. Blackbeard no doubt has an upper hand against Devil Fruit users, but hockey is something even he cannot overcome. Hence why Blackbeard retreated against an old worn out Rayleigh. Regardless, Garp's prime time allowed the world powers to be balanced during a time when extraordinary pirates rose to fame. Like he even chased the previous empress of the Amazon Lily and ex-captain of the Kuja pirates Shaki. Shaky, however you pronounce her name. But with just the power of his fist. Coming to the topic of his fist, at the age of 48, Garp fought against Don Xinjiao, a powerful pirate with Conqueror's Haki, and the leader of the mighty Xinjiao family. Xinjiao's enormous fame and power were bolstered by his pointy head. He alone had the strength to sever the impenetrable ice continent by coating his head with armor hockey and drilling a hole to his hidden treasure. Well, so he fought. During one such battle against the marines, Xing Zhao found himself face to face against Garb, who with a single punch flattened his pointy head. He was not only defeated by Garp but also lost access to all his treasure. This man would then curse Garp for the rest of his life to his entire lineage. Now apart from deforming a Conqueror's hockey user's big ass pointy head, this battle would give Garp a new title of Garp the Fist. Now Garp's strength was highly recognized by the government where he would receive the request to become an admiral, only to decline it repeatedly. According to Sengoku, this was due to his hatred towards the Godosei and the Celestial Dragons. And as admirals were commanded directly by them, it was pretty much an obvious answer. <laughs> no. no. The reasoning for Garp's detestation of the Celestial Dragons isn't really explored. Apart from the obvious despicable nature, it's highly theorized that Garp's decision is something to do with God Valley or the death of his wife. However, if Garp had accepted the promotion, in time he would have made Fleet Admiral with ease. Instead, his friend Sengoku would take up this mantle. To put things into perspective, Sengoku himself had eaten a mythical Zoan fruit, the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu. And it is said that he and Garp was on par with one another, even though Sengoku had a broken devil fruit, which literally 
actually made him a mythical being, whilst Garp simply didn't. This just goes to show how strong Garp is with his hockey and fist. Now, in the same year, the future Admiral Kuzan would also join the Marines. Though Akainu and Borsalino would have already joined two years prior, unlike them, Kuzan had a deep admiration for Garp and idolized him due to rejecting the post of Admiral time and time again. Kuzan even owed Garp an unknown debt, which played a huge important role later on through his interaction with Luffy, sparing his life. Five years later, Garp at an old age of 53 would hear the news of his longtime adversary completing his journey to Laugh Tale and becoming the Pirate King. A year later, Goldie Roger surrendered himself to the Marines, who in turn announced the execution of the Pirate King. Upon hearing this news, Golden Lion Shiki, an ex crewmate of Roxy Zebek, would challenge the government to free Roger from his shackles. Only to be put in one himself. <laughs> no, seriously. Shiki and Roger go way back as their rivalry grew from their difference in ideology and having respect for, you know, Roger's power. In fact, this was most notable when Shiki kept insisting that he and Roger form an alliance to conquer the world. Sadly, Roger wasn't interested and simply declined. This caused the Ed War. But when Roger's execution was announced, Shiki went into to a fitting rage, he stormed Marine Ford and faced off against Garp, the Fist, Bruh. and Sengoku. This resulted in the destruction of Marine Ford and then the capture of Shiki, the Golden Lion, who was imprisoned in Impel Down level 6 immediately after. This showed the immense strength that Garp possessed as someone like Shiki, who took a bunch of Marines, defeating all of them, was taken down by him. Not too long after, whilst being held captive by the Marines, Roger confronted Garb, where through the enmity had considered him his friend. Countless clashes between each other resulted in Roger having the utmost trust and respect for Garb, and even giving him the responsibility of taking care of his unborn child. My gosh, damn, that's kind of a big burden to lay on somebody. Roger explains that a child shouldn't ever bear the sins of the father, which actually contrasts Garb's story pretty well. His very own son, Monkey D Dragon, is considered to be the world's worst criminal, opposing the ideology of the world government itself and the celestial dragon directly. Unlike piracy, where people fend for themselves, making pirates more selfish in nature, dragons sought the root of the revolutionaries. But like Roger had predicted, the news of his own son being born spread like wildfire. The government went haywire, ordering the marines to exterminate all possible pregnant women in Bethadilla, where Roger was said to have a secret lover. The same thing could have happened with Luffy. Being the son of the world worst criminal, he too could have been hunted by the world government just to end Dragon's lineage. Though Luffy at this point wasn't born, Garp understood and hence went to Batarira to visit Portgus de Rouge. Now even though Garp was a stern marine and a man of justice himself, he knew the death of an infant was no justice whatsoever. And so, after two years of holding Ace in her womb and avoiding the Marines, Portgas de Rouge gave birth to Goldie Ace, with a 56-year-old Garp waiting by her bed. Secretly, Garp takes Ace back to his own country in the East Blue, in a small village at the port of Goa Kingdom. He had threatened the head of a criminal family of bandits, Curly Dadan, to take care of Ace whilst he went back and forth from the marines. However, during the same year, the world government launches an attack on the island of Ohara for the curiosity of the void century. This incident saw countless innocent archaeologists meet their end, all through the infamous Buster Call. Losing his close friend Professor Clover in this event, Garb's son, Monkey D. Dragon, decides to begin a more aggressive approach towards his liberation cause, thus forming the Revolutionary Army, along with Emporio Iwankok and Bartholomew Kuma. And then, three years later, Garb's grandson, Monkey D. Luffy, is born. Yeah, 
Now, we don't know much about Luffy's birth and how Garp got custody of his grandson while his own son is rampaging through the world. But what we do know is that Garp left Luffy to Mayor Whoopslap in Fusha Village. In fact, Garp had a long-standing relationship with this town. Unfortunately, due to his uncaring nature, Luffy started to have admiration to become a pirate with red-haired Shanks as a huge inspiration. This was something completely opposite from Garp's plans. We can infer that Garp started a mission to build a secret unit within the marines with swords likely being his creation. Though his own son Dragon went on to pursue his own methods of change, Garp stood by the law wanting to change things from within. This ideology would push him to train Ace and even Luffy to become good future marines. Sadly, they both failed and now Kobe is his only legacy. Regardless, after Luffy ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi, Garp gave him to Curly the Don to be taken care of just like Ace. Garp would visit and train the boys during his vacations, often beating them up to show the hardships of life by throwing them into danger. Luffy, being made out of rubber, never got hurt by physical attacks, but Garp's fist of love always caused him pain. This led to Luffy being extremely terrified of his grandpa while growing up. Garp's notion of tough love came deep down from his heart, as he probably thought that if he had done the same for his own son, things would have turned out different. Garp probably learned from his mistake with Dragon and wanted things to be different for Luffy and Ace. This was shown even when Sabo joined the brothers and told Garp that he too would become a pirate and set sail someday. Garp is a big scary man, being misunderstood by his very own children, but inside, he had always been a loving parent. This is when we come to the start of the series, where Garp is introduced as a random marine in charge of escorting Captain Morgan, whom his grandson just defeated with the help of Zoro. But Morgan somehow managed to get the drop on Garp, injuring him. What? Yeah, I have no idea how this F-tier wannabe bad guy slapped up one of the strongest people in the entire One Piece world either. Technically, if we're going by power scaling terms, since Garp did get injured, we have to put Morgan on the same tier as Shut Yonko, right? Regardless, Morgan escapes from the marines, resulting in Kobe and Helmeppo offering themselves up to be punished, but Garp takes responsibility for the two, taking them back to marine headquarters and overseeing their training. Garp then shows up at Water 7, just as Luffy and the gang are recovering from their fight at Eni's lobby. With this reunion, the two have an extremely heated argument and as it reaches its apex... Garp knows that as a marine, he can't let Luffy and the Straw Hats escape, but his advisor tells him to let them go and lie about them escaping. He follows his advisor's words and lets the Straw Hats go while throwing cannonballs at them to make it seem like he's trying to capture them. He even says that this isn't half as fast as they would fly in his prime. Additionally, this whole interaction is a perfect representation of Garp's values as a character. He only wants to be loved and love his grandson. Tying back to our point about what family means to him, he judges his grandson based on his character which he will have the best knowledge of because, you know, he raised him. This is a complete disobedience of the values preached by the world government or the next fleet admiral Akainu. Although Luffy is a pirate, Garp has the brain power to realize that there are good pirates and bad pirates, just as there are good marines and bad marines as he saw with Captain and Morgan not too long ago. Garp launching these cannonballs at Luffy is also a way for him to make sure his grandson is strong enough to survive the rough seas. If Luffy can't even make it past his giant cannonballs, he can never fight off the dangers that lay ahead. This point is further reinforced after Luffy's assault on Thriller Bark. When Garp learns about Luffy avoiding capture, he starts laughing his ass off inside Marie Joa. This man has the biggest balls of any character in One Piece. He is in the holy land of Marie Joa and is blatantly making 
fun of the Marines not being able to capture a notorious pirate who burnt the government's flag. He is instead showcasing his respect through laughter. However, when Ace, Garp's first grandson, gets captured and is sent to impel down, he must endure the greatest test for his ideals. Garp now has to make a choice between his family or his duty. Upon visiting Ace, Garp bears a heavy burden as he hears Ace's desire for death to avoid the war. But Garp tells him that Whitebeard won't stop even if Ace dies. He clearly said this because deep down he doesn't want to lose his grandson. Furthermore, after Luffy's legendary breakout from Impel Down, Garp almost seems proud of him infuriating Sengoku. Sengoku informs Garp of his plan to reveal Ace's heritage to the world, which he does not object to. However, when it's revealed, Suru consoles Garp and tells him that this outcome was not his fault, suggesting that Garp felt remorse for not protecting his grandson's wish of not being defined by his parentage. He laments that if Ace just became a marine following his wishes, he could have truly protected him from his fate. When Luffy appears, Garp is completely floored and bewildered, but impressed by the crew he somehow managed to form an impel down as part of Ace's rescue. When Marco begins to fly up to save Ace, Garp finally takes action. His punch slams Marco into the ground and takes him out of the battle for a while, choosing his duty over his grandson, at least for the time being. Him doing this to Marco is actually insane. Marco is a mythical zone user with healing capabilities and was able to fight king and queen simultaneously later in Wano. Yet it only took one punch from Garp to take him out. After this, Whitebeard looks at Garp with an aura of respect, calls him by his name. You may think that this doesn't mean anything, Thing, but Whitebeard didn't even call Aokiji by his name. He saw him as a brat and a rookie, but he knows what a force Garp is. He stands before all the Whitebeard pirates and screams, If you want to save Ace, you'll have to kill me. When Luffy came close to reaching Ace, Garp himself confronted him. He smashed part of the bridge in the process, saying that he could not let Luffy pass. As we have seen so far, Garp's decisions have been supporting the Marines and not his family. However, in the most critical moment we see his true nature. As he goes to hit Luffy, he remembers the past with Luffy and Ace and even recalls Ace's new desire to live. Not wanting his family to die, he can't bring himself to hurt Luffy and lets himself be knocked off the platform to save Ace instead. However, his decision to help his grandsons came a little too late. Before Garp can get up and join back in the battle, Ace is pierced from behind by a Kainu's magma fit, transforming Garp into a rage-induced monster. He becomes so unhinged that Sengoku has to restrain the hero Garp. Because if Sengoku hadn't intervened, Garp would have killed the future fleet admiral with the strongest offensive Logia in the series right then and there. This just goes to further cement Garp as the beast he truly is. Although not at his prime, he is still capable of hanging with the top dogs of One Piece. Garp was so broken that when Whitebeard started destroying Marine Ford after Ace's death, he commented that Newgate was ending the era, which he welcomed. He clearly had respect for Whitebeard, which is why it affected him deeply when he was killed by Blackbeard pirates in such an unceremonious way. After the war, Garp traveled to Fuchsia Village, seeing it as necessary to protect the island from increase in pirating activities, but the real reason he came back was to see Dadan, the mother figure to Luffy and Ace. She had heavily chastises Garp whilst beating, blaming him for not saving Ace. Due to his enormous guilt, Garp doesn't even defend himself, showing his understanding and acceptance of what he failed to do, protect his family. This initiates Garp to finally step down from his position at the Marine, from the very thing which caused this conflict. However, after being persuaded by Kong the Commander-in-Chief, Garp kept his title and position to train the new and upcoming Marines. This was done to ensure the preservation of the Marines' power and reputation. Unlike the pirates, the Marines don't have a good roster of up-and-coming soldiers. The next
next time we see Garp is after the time skip where he is assigned to escort the Neptune family including Shirahoshi for the reverie. This delegation is actually extremely important and could also be seen as something planned by the hidden organization SOAR, a group within the government that opposes their overall methodology. Remember, the fish people are not considered loyalty, neither do they have high standing. Coincidentally, we find out that Garp's own protege, Kobe and Helmeppo, are part of SOAR, the secret special force within the marines with a hidden objective. Members like X Drake even went against Cypherpole and had no issues teaming up with the Straw Hats to showcase the theme of justice they employ. Garp, being the leader and mastermind behind this group, makes a lot of sense. When he meets Steri, the king of the Goa kingdom, his homeland, he shows no allegiance to royalty, even disrespects the celestial dragons openly in front of everyone atop the holy land of Marie Schwa. This act shows that although retired, Garp believes in his own power and reputation, which would allow his antics. More importantly, Garp's decision to take down Blackbeard and save Kobe without the approval of the Marines showcases he is a one-man army. He sets sail to the headquarters of G14 to pick up his second son Helmepo, where together they can rescue his true legacy, Kobe, by heading directly to Full Elite Island. Garp isn't going to repeat the mistake with Ace. He is taking action now. Garp poses the biggest challenge to Blackbeard, who has an advantage over Devil Fruit users. But against a soul hockey master like Garp, he is just another fodder. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this other One Piece video.